I am Dr. Brian Thornberg, and let's talk measles. I'm going to do three separate videos. First, I'm going to review what is happening in West Texas, what the CDC says, and what the available literature says about measles. And then last, I'm going to focus on how we can educate you to be able to go through scientific literature and provide the same kind of critical eye that I'm going to perform here. So please stay tuned for all three of these. So first, let's get into what's happening in West Texas. 48 children have contracted measles. Of all 48 children, they're either unvaccinated or their vaccine status is unknown. But 13 out of 48 have been hospitalized, and that is a 27% hospitalization rate. That's alarming. And of course, we want to know what's happening there because we don't want to have that happen to us, to our child. We don't want to see that, and especially because we know that measles has some severe complications such as death, subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. So there's some things that we really don't want to have our child contract. But I want to get into the details of all this just to help allay some of your fears and so you can rest more comfortably. Um, it's really important to understand what's happening in West Texas because their community is not like most of our communities. So we have to highlight those differences. So we just can't take what's happening in West Texas and apply it to our community. So we want to understand what's happening. West Texas is a very poor area with inadequate social supports. And what I mean by that is in the 35 counties in West Texas, there's not a single physician in the area. That means families have to travel quite a distance to find a doctor or to find a hospital. Also, these families are lower in their economic status, which means they don't have a lot of money. So the transportation could become an issue to drive to the doctor, the cost of gas, or even owning a car. They don't have money for insurance. So that may make the cost of medications unapproachable. Without a lot of money, the diet of these children could be less than adequate. So there could be some malnourished Nourishment. Very commonly in these kinds of communities, there's a high obesity rate, and that obviously can contribute to negative outcomes once a child gets sick. Additionally, the level of education in this part of Texas is not that great. Quite a number have not finished high school. Even fewer have attended college, and they may under-recognize some serious symptoms and signs of an illness. And then last, there is a large Mennonite population in this part of Texas, and these individuals do not admit administer vaccines to their children. They're similar to the Amish, and so their religious practices and beliefs limit how they will approach medical access, health access, preventative care. So with all of these barriers, you can understand why 27% were hospitalized. I did look online to discover what the admitting diagnoses were for these 13 children, and I cannot find any of this information. As you look at what's happening in Texas, understand that this is a unique community with very specific challenges. Obviously, our prayers and wishes go out to these families. Stay tuned for video number two, and thanks for watching.